Hi there, thank you so much for joining me. I am here on a Care Collab together with all the channels that are now going across your screen. There's 12 of us in total. So thank you very much, Fernanda, for the heads up. Here I am with my contribution to the update of my Lelia Perparatas. The link to the original video from earlier in the year is in the description below. And I thought I would show you the deep insights into the beautiful lip of a Lelia Perparata variety of Equoisery. I took a picture because I wasn't sure if the breeze would be able to capture a still without moving the lip around too much, but here we are on camera now. The lip of my Lelia Perparata Verkoiserie, just in time for this update. So happy. I've taken the filming of this to the wire because I was hoping that they would open for today in time to be able to post my video and be a part of this care collab together with my beautiful set of blooms of my first preparata to bloom this year. My Lelia Preparata Verkoiserie. Two blooms this year. I had three last year. Considering what I put her through, root ball cleanup, etc. last year, I am just happy that she has decided to bloom for me. She hasn't yet developed her full fragrance. It's gonna get much more intense in the next two or three days. These blooms opened, well, this one, started to crack yesterday and this morning when I removed the curtain from my east side growing area this second one had opened overnight and here we are and I'm so pleased to say the least. Now that I have her in bloom the orchids are going to go into my blooming alley because as you can see even though the perparatas like a lot of light and their foliage should always be a little bit more on the light green side, maybe a hint of yellow. This is already a little bit too much for my liking. It all looks very yellow on screen. It is not that bad in reality, but when I see it on screen, I'm a little bit alarmed and I will put them now into my blooming alley, even though the back ones are not in bloom yet, but just to give them a little bit more protection, they've had enough light. If they're gonna bloom this year, then light is not a problem anymore. At least I have some blooms from my Lelia Perparata Verkhoiserie. The other ones are doing quite well. I don't have any sheaths just yet that I can see or rely on blooming with my Lelia Perparata Verkhoiserie Striata orchid. You see this growth right here. It's coming on really well, growing some new roots, which is always welcome. Lots and lots of happy sap but there's no sheath in there at this point in time. But in order to not get it too stressed out, it will now go on the top shelf of my blooming alley, which is also south facing, but much less exposed to the light because of the angle of the sun being so very high now. Whereas my east side is full sun for about six, if not seven hours a day. Plus all the white walls reflecting all the light as well, just adds to the whole light influx equation. I'm okay with the color of the leaves, but they don't need to get any more yellow than this. Here's my Lelia purpurata striata. And this one is only just now starting on a new growth. Also had a massive, massive root ball rejuvenation and cleanup last year, but it's doing fine. And that is going to be a really nice growth. I can see it is not going to suffer any kinds of consequences from my radical repot methods. <laughs> the elephant in the room, the pretty, pretty elephant in the room, however, is this. And right now they're all getting 300 parts per million of fertilizer. Every single time their reservoir is empty, they get flushed through every single time the reservoir is empty before I fill up the reservoir once again with 300 parts per million of fertilizer. And I have to mist a lot. I am misting now at least three to four times a day. We have had some extremely, extremely dry winds, not hot, but so dry. My humidity is below 30% for most of the day. And then it rises again to about 45, 50 for the night. But 28% is not a good thing so I missed a lot because I do not want to compromise 
anything regarding new root growth on the top layer of my lecker, seeing as I have a dry top layer to contend with. So a lot of misting, a lot of watering, and a lot of flushing. But that is all good. That is all the way it's meant to be for this time of year. And I'm very pleased to be able to show you these blooms. If I didn't circle back to the point of the fragrance, it'll develop in about two or three days, seeing as these have just opened. And I am so looking forward to the lemon sherbet, cream pie kind of fragrance that the Werkhäuser has. There's a real kick of lemon, as if the lemon rind has been spritzed over the top of the lemon sherbet. And then you take a spoonful of that, but creamy and super intense without being invasive. It is amazing. It's one of those fragrances. If you were to bottle it, I would want to wear it. It is gorgeous. I already feel a little bit of hint of it, but it's not fully, fully established yet. But the next two or three days, it'll be there. And then I'm hoping for approximately three weeks of bloom duration. If the dry winds would stop, that would be nice. If not, I'll get two weeks out of them and then she can settle down and start on a new growth again, which is not a bad thing to get another growth within the same season. So thank you very, very much, Fernanda, for the heads up on this update. I look forward to seeing everybody's blooms. I'm anticipating a lot of beautiful blooms out on the videos that are linked in my description below. So if you're into Lelia purpurata or you haven't quite decided if you want one yet or which one to get for your collection, because there really are so many varieties, head down into the description below, find the links, and then maybe that'll help you in your decision-making process. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Stay safe and take care. Bye.